Hi everyone, glad you could join us. My name is Ellie, I'm an engineer on the CDKates team, and today I want to show you what it's like to develop a Kubernetes application using CDKates and CDKates Plus. All right, so just some context. This is the construct catalog. It's essentially a Twitter account that tweets every time a new CDK library is published. Now, today we want to add some search capabilities to it. We want users to be able to query uh, to discover those libraries. Okay, so this is my application. Uh, it was generated or initialized using the CDK CLI. And you can see there's a main.ts file here, which declares my CDK chart. And this is where my uh, resources uh, will go. Okay, uh, to implement the, the application, we're going to use Elasticsearch as the backend. And specifically, we're going to use the Elasticsearch operator slash custom resource. So to that end, I already have the uh, custom resource definition in my Kubernetes cluster. You can see it here. And what I want to do is import this definition into my application so I can use it in my TypeScript code. Now to do that, I'm going to use the CDKates import command, which will read the definition, the schema, the JSON schema, and generate uh, TypeScript code. All right, so let's do it. So we run kubectl get CRD, and we take the Elasticsearch CRD, output it as a JSON, and uh, pipe it to CDKates import. Okay, now we have this Elasticsearch.ts file here. You can see it's pretty big, and it contains the entire API spec of the custom resource as TypeScript code. And you can also see that there's this top-level Elasticsearch API object here, or a resource, and this is what we'll be using. All right, so let's use it. We're going to do a new Elasticsearch. Uh, you can already see the nice ID completion. I give it a scope and uh, an ID and some properties. So we're gonna give it, uh, you can see there are a few uh, um, optional and a few required ones. You can also see a nice inline uh, documentation. So let's start with the version. We're gonna use 7.7.1. Uh, we'll configure one node set with a count of one and the name of default. And we also need a few other configuration properties, which I'm just going to paste in so I don't make any uh, mistakes. Okay, I'm also going to disable SSL for now, uh, just because it makes it easier uh, with the demo. So this is how you do it. And also I'm going to explicitly set my service ports. Uh, so I'm going to use the standard, oops, standard Elasticsearch. Uh, 9200 port. Okay, that's it. That's all I need. Now uh, I can generate my manifest. Sorry. Uh, I do this by running CDKates sin. And let's take a quick look. So this is the manifest. Uh, no big surprises here, right? This is uh, what we expected. And also it has this metadata name here, which was auto generated by the CDKates. So the CDKs will generate a name for every resource that doesn't have a name configured. And this is going to be very useful. Uh, we'll see why later on. All right, uh, let's apply this to the cluster. OK, uh, let's take a look at our pods. We have one initializing pod. That makes sense. Let's give it a second. Uh, now let's take a look at our service. We have this HTTP service, which we configured with the 9200 port. And you can also see that the service name also has this uh, prefix uh, of the custom resource name, this one. OK, um, let's see where our pod, pods are. Have one running pod. It's still not ready. Let's give it a second or two. All right, cool. It's ready now. I'm also going to uh, index some um, mock data into the cluster just so we'll have something to play with. Uh, so I can do this by running oops, cube cuddle port forward. And I have this uh, curl command ready here. All right. Now let's, uh, let's move on. So the next thing I want to do is create the, a small proxy service that's basically going to translate user requests into Elasticsearch queries and uh, return the result to the, to the user. So I already have this code prepared. It's not super interesting. Uh, the one thing to note here is that I need to pass these three environment variables to it. And this is, uh, we're going to have to pass it from the, from, uh, from the application, from the manifest uh, definitions. 
All right, uh, so uh, uh, what I want to do now is create the container, right? I need to create a container and configure the environment variables and, uh, and somehow include this query.js uh, file in the container. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use CDKates Plus. Now, CDKates Plus is a package which is part of the CDKates uh, tool chain and it contains these high level intent based APIs that are based on uh, the low level uh, core Kubernetes objects, but they make it a lot more easier and, and natural to work with. Now let me, just, let me just show you what I mean. All right, so I'm just gonna import this uh, CDKates Plus library as K plus uh, from CDKates Plus. And I'm going to create my container. So I'm gonna do new K plus container. So I need to give it the image. So it's going to be node12.18.0-stretch specific. Um, and the command is going to be node query.js, right? And I'm going to give it a port. And I need to configure the port here as well. So let's just extract this out. Uh, it's going to be query port. And we're going to use it here and we're going to use it here. Okay, now I need to um, expose or make this query.ts file available to the container. So I like doing this with config map based volumes and then just mounting the volume onto the container at a specific path. So let's do that. Let's create a, a config map. So I'm gonna do config map, k plus config map, give it a scope and an ID and take a look at its API. So I see that there's this add file API, which is exactly what I need. So I'm going to use it. And now uh, I need to create the volume, right? So I'm going to do k plus dot volume from config map. And now I need to mount this volume to the container. So to do that, I'm going to store the container again in constant and take a look at its API. So I can see that there is a container dot mount API, which accepts a path and a volume. And I'm going to need to configure this path also as the working directory of, oops, of my container so that this command will work. Now let's extract this uh, out. Okay, and use it here and use it here. Duplication averted. All right, uh, now I need to configure the environment variables. So to do that, I'm going to use the end key. And let's take a look at which environment variables do I need. So I need the Elasticsearch username, that's easy. Um, it's going to be like a, the standard default uh, username that uh, the custom resource creates. So I'm gonna do k plus dot n value from value, basically just a way to pass a literal string. Uh, the next thing is the Elasticsearch endpoint, which is a little more interesting. It's going to be k plus dot n value, but let's stop here for a second. So the, the endpoint is actually related to the service that we saw before. So let's take a look at it again. <clears throat> this is the HTTP service that I want to uh, hit. So I'm going to have to construct the endpoint using the service name and the service port with the, with the HTTP, of course. So again, I'm going to do from value. So it's a literal string. It's just a, a, a dynamic one. And here I'm going to do HTTP. And now I need to uh, have access to this uh, uh, generated name. So to do that, I'm going to store the custom resource oops, in a constant, elastic. And now I can just use this resource dot name uh, and to, to act to get the name and again this dot name will work for any uh, CDK resource even if you don't uh, specify a name on your on, on your own all right so now I just need to append this suffix and I also need to give it the 9200 port and since this is repeating itself also so let's just uh, extract this so it's going to be es port and I'm going to use it here, and I'm going to use it here. All right, next up is the password. 
So the password uh, is the most interesting one uh, because it's actually stored inside a Kubernetes uh, secret and it's created by the custom resource. So if we take a look at the secrets, uh, this is the secret we need. Uh, and again, you can see that it's prefixed with this uh, resource name, which we already know how to access. So the first thing we need to do is import this secret into our manifest, uh, so to speak. So to do that, we just use the k plus dot secret from secret name and again we already know how to create this uh, name just by doing this okay and now we can use this secret to create environment variable values for it. so we do k plus and value from secret whoops yep oh no from secret we give it the secret and uh, we give it the specific key inside the secret that actually contains the value. And again, this is the, the documented uh, uh, key. Okay, I think we're ready as far as the container is concerned. Um, the next thing we want to do is just create the deployment. So we do new K plus deployment. We give it a scope and an ID. I'm going to go a little faster here. Uh, and configure so just one replica and the pod spec is going to be just my uh, single container oops container all right and now i want to expose this deployment as a service right so let's take a look at the api that the deployment resource has um, okay deployment dot so you can see that there's an expose here uh, which says expose the deployment via a service Equivalent to running kubectl expose. This is perfect. This is what I need. So I'm just gonna give it the port just, uh, Port uh, to my uh, Willing um, All right, I think that's 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 that should work So let's generate the manifest and see and see where we are at so cd cakes sin Let's take a look all right, so we can see the manifest is much bigger now, obviously also because of this inline application code here. Uh, but we can also see that there is the service here, right? And the deployment here, which is great. And also we can see that uh, these selectors are here, even though we didn't really uh, specify them in the application, right? Here, we didn't have to uh, think about selectors like anywhere. Normally when you define the YAML, uh, you have to, uh, apply labels to the pod and then you have to apply the selectors or use them as the selector for the deployment and the same thing for the service. Now CDK8 Plus actually does that for us. It, it, it interprets our intent. This is what I mean by like intent based APIs. It, it, assu it assumes that if the pod spec template is defined in the scope of the deployment here, then it makes sense that the deployment will just automatically select uh, the pods in its template. Now another thing worth mentioning is that uh, for example, this target port of the service is also kind of implicitly inferred, right? We didn't have to uh, specify this here when we exposed the deployment because the, the, the information is already here. Um, and also, uh, CDK Plus configured uh, this volume in the pod spec for us. We didn't have to configure uh, the volume here in the pod spec because again, this volume is, is, is attached to this container. So it knows that it needs to be part of the pod spec as well. All right, um, I think we're just about ready to apply this. So let's apply. Let's just do a one quick, uh, quick check to see that uh, everything is configured properly. Yeah, all right. So we do cube cuddle apply. All right, let's take a look at our uh, pods. Yeah, we have one running pod. So now comes the moment of truth. Let's uh, create the port forward and uh, try to hit that uh, endpoint. So we do kubectl port forward using the service name and uh, the 9000 port that we configured here. And let's hit the endpoint now. Yeah, cool. You can see that uh, this is the CDK, uh, CDK library that we saw before in the in the catalog. This one, the statics uh, website. 
And this is what we're, uh, what we're after, uh, obviously uh, building some nice uh, UIs on top of that. All right, so this is uh, what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you can see the potential these kinds of APIs have and uh, how they can really reduce the cognitive load for developers and make it a, nice, a much more uh, friendlier experience. We think it's, it's a cool direction for, for manifest uh, authors. Um, all right, I'm gonna head it over to Nate right now for a quick recap and uh, thanks so much. Bye everyone. Thanks, Ellie. That was a fantastic demo. I really want to thank you for taking the time with us today to learn a little bit more about how CDKs can help you accelerate and standardize development of Kubernetes anywhere. We have big things planned for this project, so get involved or follow along on GitHub or at cdkates.io. If you want to check out and, and try the demo that Ellie just showed, we have the link right here and that's on our GitHub.